Hi guys, Sean here from StudyClicks and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Theorem 20 and this theorem states two separate things so we're just going to take it point by point and the first thing this theorem states is that each tangent is perpendicular to the radius that goes to the point of contact. So uh, first of all I'm just going to explain what's meant by tangent. Uh, tangent is any line which touches exactly one point on the outside of a circle. So if the line crosses into the circle and then touches two points or crosses the circle at all, it's not a tangent. So uh, with that said, we're just going to take a look at our circle now. So uh, here we have a circle and the first thing we're going to do is just draw a line which connects the center to any point on the outside of the circle, like so. And as you can see, we've created a new point on the outside of the circle. And what we're going to do now is just draw a line which touches this point, but no other point on the outside of the circle. So it's going to basically go alongside the circle uh, through this point, and that is going to look like this. And um, what this theorem states is that the angle created by uh, these two lines intersecting is 90 degrees. So if we examine this angle in here, uh, this angle is always going to be 90 degrees as long as the line we are using is in fact our radius r, and the tangent is just touching one point on the outside, which is a point that's connected to the center of the circle. So that is all that's meant by the first part of this theorem. The second part of this theorem states that if a point P lies on the circle S and a line L is perpendicular to the radius 2P, then L is a tangent to S. So uh, this is basically the converse of the first part of our theorem. It's kind of just uh, the reverse implication, meaning that if we have a line L which is perpendicular to the line which represents the radius, then we know that L is a tangent to S, but let's just demonstrate that visually now. So uh, here we have our circle and we know that uh, the line connecting the point P to the center is the radius, which we're just going to label R. And we're also told that the angle created by the line L and this point uh, P joined to the center is going to be 90 degrees. And that just means that we know that the line L in this case is a tangent. So L is a tangent. And that's all that's meant by the second part of this theorem. It's basically just as I said, the same rule kind of stated in reverse. So the last part of this video is going to be to cover corollary 6. And just to remind you what a corollary is, it's simply a statement that follows on from a theorem. So uh, we know that theorem 20 is true and this corollary uh, basically means that uh, something else is true because of that theorem. And what this corollary states is that if two circles intersect at one point only, then the two centers and the point of contact are collinear. So if we have two circles, like so, and we just join their centers to the point at which they touch, like so, and we're just going to label uh, the two respective radiuses R1 and R2. Uh, what this corollary means, and uh, what's meant by the term collinear up here, is that R1 and R2 basically form one uh, common line. So they're not actually two separate lines, because the circles touch at exactly one point in here, we get uh, one big line by joining the center of the first circle to this point of contact in here and joining the center of the other circle to this point of contact in here as well. So uh, that's it for this theorem and this corollary and I'll see you next time.